Um, how will you be voting on the referendum and why? <sighs> okay, so this topic is obviously divisive. It's controversial. And I think my one message surrounding this is that you are able to vote however you want to vote. And I don't I don't like the the tone of some of the messaging about, well, if you're gonna vote no, then you don't value education. Um, it's it's a it's a lazy argument. B, it's oversimplified. Um, there are members of the community, and before I jump into that, let sure. me say something else. This is once failed. This is a once failed thing. So, and I, I feel like for some reason that's being overlooked. Like, the majority said no once already. And instead of, and I feel like this was an area for opportunity that wasn't capitalized on. Because instead of just hammering home the yes folks, I would have wanted to talk to the no folks and like dive into that a little bit more. Um, because the, the there are members in our community who are retired on a fixed income, don't have kids. I was talking to someone the other day, didn't even know they lived in unit five because they don't have kids, right? So, um, and it doesn't mean that these people are terrible people, okay? I We have to be able to like, acknowledge that that both things can be true and and so I guess my messaging would be <clears throat> that if you're gonna vote yes I understand that there are things that led you to that place and that you're voting on issues that are important to you about that yes you know programs are being talked about being cut so if you're a junior high or high school parent and that's like your kiddos whole existence who am I to tell you that that's not a valid reason for you to vote yes? That's completely, you know, an acceptable reason for you to vote yes. But if you literally have no ties to Unit 5, if you're retired, um, if your kids go to private school, if you homeschool, and you don't feel the same pull to those things, it doesn't mean you're a terrible person either. Um, and I think that would that's kind of my biggest like pickle with all of this is the messaging has kind of been like to me it's felt like a little bit of like a bully mentality like if you don't vote this way you must be blank and you know I'm not here to tell you how to vote um how are you going to vote though I voted no the first time so I feel inclined that that's I feel like there's areas to explore I'm sure Dennis talked a little bit about that. Um, no one wants to talk about cuts, right? But that has to be something that's on the table. Um, no one wants to um, talk about looking at other things. Um, you know, whatever it is that you have to come to the table and, and we don't have the money, right? So there's no magical cuts aren't the the program cuts aren't going to do anything right that's the drop in the bucket so i i i feel like some of that is scary and maybe scared people vote a certain way and um yeah that's all i'm going to say about that but for the most part people want a yes this solves everything or this magic thing fixes it. And unfortunately, I don't have that for you. The other side does. I mean, the other side's plan at this point is hoping it passes, right? So there's no there's no, no profound plan coming from that, that side either. And that's not a dig. That just means that, you know, there's this isn't a black and white, like click a button and something fixes it. Um, if it if it passes, I still think that the community has voiced once already, you know, that we don't, we're not necessarily satisfied with, with how things are going. And that's, that's some messaging that I think needs to, whether, whether it passes or not, that messaging needs to, um, 
be considered. Mm 